What's going on guys? Dare here with Fantasy Football Advice coming at you with another fantasy football video. Today we are going over the week 8 starts and sits at the wide receiver position. As per usual we're going matchup by matchup. We'll let you know which guys have plenty of upside and which guys you should probably leave on the bench. If you're still unsure on who to start or sit you can always utilize the rankings available on our website thefantasyfootballadvice.com. The link for that is in the description box below but we have a lot of matchups to get to so we'll just jump right into it. It. The first matchup we have is the Philadelphia Eagles versus the Buffalo Bills and the Philadelphia Eagles is always a defense that you want to target when you're talking opposing wide receivers so John Brown finds himself in one of the best matchups he's had all season so top end wide receiver two type production from him is something you can definitely expect this week. The only other player for Buffalo that you would really consider starting is probably Cole Beasley but I wouldn't go there. For the Philadelphia Eagles side though you have Alshon Jeffrey who had been on a bit of a tear getting Getting a minimum of eight targets for three straight weeks. Unfortunately, though, facing Dallas, he really took a dip, catching just two balls for 38 yards. And I would expect a lot more of the same heading into this week. Buffalo's defense against the pass is no joke. Their defense in general is one of the best in the league. But more specifically, towards the pass, they rank top five. Considering he is the top option in the Philadelphia offense, he's still startable. But still, due to the matchup, you're going to have to adjust those expectations. And starting him as anything more than a flex is going to be a risky endeavor. Atlanta Falcons versus Seattle Seahawks and a lot of this comes down to if Matt Ryan plays or not. Uh, Matt Ryan has not been ruled out as of yet but has not been practicing this week. The backup situation it's not the worst in the world when it comes to production from fantasy receivers so someone like Julio Jones is going to be startable regardless. It would more impact the potential upside of players like Calvin Ridley but Seattle's not a defense that's particularly strong against the pass so expecting wide receiver one type production from Julio and back in wide receiver two type production from from Calvin Ridley is going to be a reasonable expectation regardless of who starts obviously more upside with Matt Ryan starting and on the other side of the ball for Seattle it doesn't get much better of a matchup the Falcons defense is one of the worst in the league so Tyler Lockett lock him in as a wide receiver one Metcalf's also startable we saw him get an increase in opportunities with the loss of Will Disley so he's going to remain in that similar role ensuring his production as a wide receiver two slash flex type player in such a great matchup feel confident putting him in this week up next we have the chicago bears versus the los angeles chargers and keenan allen was added to the injury report with a hamstring injury he didn't practice at all on thursday which doesn't bode all that well for his availability on sunday but it's a situation we're going to continue to monitor if he does play though he is a locked in back end wide receiver one with mike williams being more of a flex if he were to miss though we're bumping up williams that flex more of a back end wide receiver two with an obvious bump to hunter henry who's already locked in as a te1 and Austin Eckler as well look for him to get a few more targets but that's just a situation to monitor make sure if you do have Keenan Allen you are keeping track of the injury report but for the Bears the Chargers defense from the past perspective has not been as fearful as it typically is meaning Allen Robinson he's a strong start this week you still can't trust players like Anthony Miller though so stick with Robinson as a wide receiver too for this matchup and leave all other Chicago receivers on the bench Detroit Lions versus the New York Giants and Marvin Jones is coming off of a spectacular game in which he caught four touchdowns against a Minnesota defense which is much stronger against the pass than the New York Giants is so first reaction from everybody is going to be to start him and why yes he is a start this week just know Marvin Jones is well known to do this have these explosion games and then come back to reality so there's no way we're starting him over Kenny Galladay but a back-end wide receiver two high-end wide receiver three it's a safe bet for Marvin Jones Kenny Galladay is a back and wide receiver one his volume in this offense is secure the New York Giants pass defense is pitiful so overall this is a great spot for all Detroit Lions receivers so if you can get them in your lineup fire them up on the other side of the ball for the New York Giants Sterling Shepard unfortunately is not going to play again this week which means Golden Tate is going to be thrust back into that slot wide receiver role which means one more week of flex value is certainly available Detroit currently ranks 15th against the pass so a lot of opportunity there and this game also has a 49.5 projected point total which is on the higher end and with the Lions favored by six and a half it does favor a game script in which the Giants are passing late in the game so Golden Tate back in wide receiver two high end wide receiver three Evan Engram he's an incredible start as well Darius Slayton on the other hand still a bit too risky if there were a matchup to put him in I could understand you wanting to start him in this one but we don't even have him ranked inside the top 50 moving on we have the Buccaneers versus the Titans and Titans are actually two and a half point favorites in this game no surprise Ryan Tan 
Tannehill getting the nod to start once again, which does open up opportunities for some of these Tennessee Titans receivers to have a little bit of fantasy value. Nothing startable yet. Corey Davis, you could put in as a desperation flex. Nothing more than that. But even AJ Brown saw increased volume. So there's some upside and potential in the future. But even against this Tampa Bay defense, which has been allowing really strong wide receiver performances throughout the entire season, you still don't want to add all that risk to your team. So it's best to avoid these players, which you haven't had to rely on for the entire season. For Tampa Bay, though, Mike Evans, wide receiver one. Chris Godwin, wide receiver one as well. Godwin outpaces Evans, as he probably will for the remainder of the season. But both are fine starts in this matchup, even against an underrated pass defense of the Tennessee Titans. Broncos versus Colts. We have a 42.5 projected point total with the Broncos coming in as 5.5 point dogs, which means not a lot of production expected from this Broncos offense. We have Emmanuel Sanders no longer on the roster, which solidifies Cortland Sutton's role as a high-end wide receiver too. This matchup, though, is not the greatest for him. The Colts secondary, it's no joke. Worst receivers, though, have found success, so feel comfortable starting him as a wide receiver too again. And T.Y. Hilton, although Denver does rank top 10 in opposing pass defense, Hilton's just a type of player that can get it done regardless of matchup. So it may be one of the tougher games that he's playing this season, but he's already proven to be able to perform in tough matchups. And having double-digit targets in two out of his last three games and scoring five touchdowns in his last five weeks, it'd be silly not to start him with his undeniable wide receiver one upside. Bengals versus Rams, and the Bengals are looking for their first win of the entire season. They're 0-7 right now, coming in against the Rams as massive dogs. The Rams are coming into this game as 13-point favorites. Cooper Cup is the obvious leader in this passing game. He now has 572 receiving yards and four touchdowns on the season. This Bengals pass defense is also trending downward, so expect another big game from him. And that goes for the other two LA Rams receivers as well. Brandon Cooks, Robert Woods. Cooks production though is very volatile. He hasn't been getting the targets, even in matchups in which he should succeed. For that reason, dropping him in the rankings was a necessity. So we have Cup, wide receiver one, Robert Woods back in wide receiver two, and Brandon Cooks, more of a volatile flex play, but can be started as a wide receiver three as well. Just know with him, you're obviously banking on the big play, and the big play just hasn't been seeing itself through. For the Bengals side though, this is a good matchup from a game script perspective. They should be trailing for most of this game, and the Rams are going to be putting up points requiring the Bengals to answer back. Rams have been above average when it comes to their pass defense, but they aren't elite by any means. Starting Boyd as a back-end wide receiver too is going to be based on volume, but he does have some upside in this matchup as well. Auden Tate, we saw him bounce onto the scene. While he still is the clear second wide receiver in this offense, there's still no way you can trust him at this point. If you own him, you unlikely have to go there, so it's best just to bench him. We have the New Orleans Saints versus the Arizona Cardinals, and interestingly enough, there is a chance that Drew Brees does start in this game. Already, it's a 48 and a half point projected point total with the Saints favored by 10 points. I expect that point total projection to increase if Brees does get the nod to start. He is obviously a big boost in this offensive production, but even without him, starting Michael Thomas, it's a safe bet. Arizona Cardinals, they allow a ton of passing production, and almost every receiver that goes against him has a good game, so Michael Thomas, whether it's Drew Brees or Teddy Bridgewater, expect a solid performance. For Cardinals, though, just keep in mind, the New Orleans Saints are pretty underrated when it comes to their pass defense. They are top 12 and do typically have a good game against some of these younger teams that are more prone to mistakes. So Larry Fitzgerald, who's already been struggling a bit, he's nothing more than a wide receiver three. Christian Kirk, who may not even play, if he does, I wouldn't even start him in the flex. It's just a more difficult matchup that meets the eye. It's very likely for the team to rely more on production from Chase Edmonds and also the legs of Kyler Murray himself. Jets versus Jags. Sam Darnold, Robbie Anderson. Expect a bounce back game from them. Jags are favored by six and a half, setting up a game script in which Sam Darnold will be playing from behind late in the game. You could also start Crowder as flex level player. I wouldn't be enamored with the upside, but if you're in some sort of pinch and need a desperation play, Jameson Crowder could be your guy. D.D. Westbrook on the other side of the ball may not be playing. If he does play though, he is unlikely to be 100%, which boosts the rankings of players like DJ Chark. Chark, high end wide receiver two this week. The Jets secondary has been susceptible to the pass as of late. And if Westbrook is out there, but in more of a decoy role, that only opens up more opportunities for DJ Chark himself. If Westbrook does suit up, back end wide receiver three production, probably the best you're going to get. 
Panthers at 49ers and this one's pretty simple so we'll gloss over it it's a very low over under 42 points San Francisco favored by five and a half San Francisco's defense really strong Panthers defense pretty strong as well you're not going to be expecting very big games from any Panthers receivers San Francisco ranks second in passing DVOA DJ Moore Curtis Samuel whatever production you're expecting to get from them likely decrease it a little bit neither of which we have ranked inside the top 30 and for the 49ers Debo Samuel has a shot of playing but they added in wide receiver Emmanuel Sanders in a trade with the Denver Broncos. And while Sanders is likely going to be the future of this passing offense and likely the main target in this offense, as for right now, it's just too new to rely on. So leaving them on the bench is the best way to go. Dante Pettis may not play, but even with that minor impacts, no receiver on the 49ers offense is going to be ranked inside of the top 40. Browns and Patriots. And for the Browns receivers, they're going to be having a very difficult time. Odell Beckham, Jarvis Landry, they now face the number one pass defense in the entire league. If there were a player to be able to have a semi-decent game against Stephon Gilmore, it would be someone like Odell Beckham. But Baker Mayfield's play has been a bit erratic, so it may shock you to hear. Odell Beckham is not even inside the top 24. Landry's ranking did get less of an impact. He's still just inside the top 40, but not a guy who you should really be fighting to get inside of your lineup. And on the Patriots side of the ball, expect a typical game from Julian Edelman, high volume, safe wide receiver to production. Mohamed Sanu, he does join the Patriots squad after a trade with the Atlanta Falcons for a second round pick. Don't thrust him into your lineups though. Philip Dorsett is likely the better start in this matchup just due to his familiarity in the offense and is now healthy. So there's that. But just keep in mind, even Dorsett, he is likely best left on the bench depending on your options. We have him ranked as a wide receiver for this week. Raiders versus Texans. And at this point, it appears that Tyrell Williams will be making his return this week. If he does, it's a great matchup for him. It has a 52 point over under with the Texans projected to win by seven points. So game script implies the Raiders will be passing as well as being against a Texans team, which has been susceptible to the pass as of late, including allowing a very good game to T.Y. Hilton. But with that, just considering that he hasn't been able to log in a full practice and is likely still banged up, we do have to drop him in the rankings. So look for Darren Waller to continue to dominate as a receiver for this Oakland. Raiders offense. On the other side of the ball, Will Fuller expected to miss several weeks. This opens up opportunities for other receivers in the offense. For Kenny Stills, Kiki Kuti may also see more field time as a result. Kenny Stills we have ranked inside of the top 30, and DeAndre Hopkins we have him ranked as the number one wide receiver on the week. Chiefs at Packers, it's unfortunate that we lost Patrick Mahomes, although he's not going to be gone all that long. He's very unfortunate for owners of players like Tyreek Hill or Travis Kelsey. Backup quarterbacks do tend to rely on their big weapons tight end and especially when you have Travis Kelsey who's one of the premier tight ends in the league you can definitely expect continued usage from Kelsey and Tyreek Hill he doesn't need to have a prolific passer to remain productive we saw Tyreek Hill with Alex Smith and Alex Smith is in no way a prolific passer and was still able to give Tyreek Hill wide receiver one type numbers however it's an undeniable dip in potential ceiling we do still have Hill ranked back in wide receiver one this week even against a tough Green Bay Packers passing defense Thanks. On the Green Bay side of things, Devontae Adams unlikely to play. Not too much of a surprise there. That leaves Alan Lazard, Geronimo Allison, and Marquez Valdez-Scantling. Lazard did disappoint, but only due to the fact that players like Geronimo Allison and Marquez Valdez-Scantling did end up playing in a game which we thought would only have Alan Lazard. So, fact of the matter is, if Allison and MVS are playing, Lazard, he's an afterthought. And considering that's what it looks to be, you can throw MVS or Allison in the floor flex nothing more than that and Alan Lazard leave him on the bench the final matchup we have is the Monday night matchup the Dolphins versus the Steelers and this one's not going to be super exciting Steelers without Ben Roethlisberger Dolphins with Ryan Fitzpatrick and Ryan Fitzpatrick hasn't looked horrible he definitely does bring life into the fantasy receiving core but not enough life so that you can trust players like Devontae Parker so the only real player in this game that you would think of starting at the receiver position would be someone like Juju Smith-Schuster which has an excellent matchup against Miami secondary which have been beaten all season long but just due to the inefficiencies in this passing offense it's hard to rank him as anything more than a mid-grade wide receiver too but mid-grade wide receiver too means he is a start for you this week so put him in the lineup and don't overthink it don't start anybody else in this matchup but guys if you have a tough start and sit decision leave it in the comment section down below or you can go ahead and check our rankings available on our website thefantasyfootballadvice.com link for that is in the description box below if you did enjoy 
enjoy this video, please hit that like button. If you're new to the channel, please make sure to subscribe. But we thank you all for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. Will Fuller unfortunately expected to miss several 